What is up everybody, welcome back to the channel, my name is Fulplatocha, and today we're going to be talking about the Hoka Mach 5 at 250 plus miles, but in this particular case, the end of life. So, before we get into it, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel if you're subscribed watching this content. Thanks so much, love you guys a lot, make sure you follow me on Instagram and Strava for all sorts of other updates, also on Rumble if ever, something ever happens to me on YouTube, I'm going to be there anyway. So, without further ado, let's begin! So the specs for the shoe will be somewhere up here, wherever it fits. So as I mentioned, this shoe does have 250 plus miles. I think specifically it may have 272 plus. And the reason I stopped there is obviously for what you're going to find on the outsoles of the shoe. But one other thing, but first, of course, we will start with just that. So that is my left foot. Here's my right foot. And I think the last time I talked about this shoe, I was discussing how even the wear was in between both of them. And obviously at this point, as the time spent on the shoe continues, I think the amount of wear between both feet, in my particular case, begins to diverge a lot more. And as you can probably tell by the right foot, I've already cut right into the pro fly in this particular area. Not as badly as I thought it was supposed to be, but it is getting to the point where I was experiencing a bit of soreness and a bit of achiness in the ankle of my right foot, which is usually a bad sign. So that's why I decided to cut this shoe entirely out of my running lineup at this, you know, at this point in time. So based on the wear, as I can see it, you can see that the, the, as you get closer to the midfoot, that wear is not nearly as bad as the top portions of the foot, which tells me that most likely as I'm running down a hill or something, I'm breaking and then I'm launching off. And that kind of resembles what's going on here with the wear, particularly on the outsole here. And in this particular area, I hope we can like do the lighting on this pretty well. You can see it's kind of rigid on this sort of direction. So you can see it's being pushed and then it's being broken into it like a braking mechanism into the next lug of the shoe. So a lot of hill running with the shoe has kind of really beaten it up to this point. And it's quite similar, if uh, not actually more defined in this particular shoe with its lugs. I wonder if we can get this like nice and even. Maybe that'll work out. You can see we got like a bit of a ridge here, a bit of a ridge there. Just in case that angle doesn't work, let's do it right there as well. And um, yeah, very interesting that, you know, when the shoe is breaking, it's smacking the ends of those lugs to kind of stop me from, you know, continuing to move down the hill and then taking the next step or the next stride at that point. So. It's kind of expected, especially out here where there's a lot of hills, and that's the type of running that would mostly be in the case of this Mach 5. So, the other thing about this shoe that kind of put it at its end of life to me was that it started scrunching up a lot in this midfoot area, and I wasn't sure if the shoe was just running too large, and this is what was going on, or the shoe lacing was just getting tight. So, two things did actually happen in the meantime as I declared this shoe as retired. One, I did end up buying a new pair of Mach 5s, and I ended up buying two of them actually. This is the size 8.5, which is existing to what I had there, and I bought a size 8. So I was experimenting with the possibility that Hoka shoes were maybe running a little bit larger, and in that particular instance I figured, hey, let's try to get a size down and see if this would be something more suitable in this category and the size 8 was far too small so size 8 and a half is good it's just the way you lock down and tie the shoe that makes the difference here so in this particular case very weird sensations going on with the new Mach 5 that I have one is that in the particularly the left foot it has a tighter fit than the right one and I don't know if this is just biomechanics or maybe my left foot is slightly larger than the right one or it's vice versa and just the way the shoes are tied down is having sort of an issue but it requires me to loosen the right foot a lot more when I tie it down. So it kind of makes for an interesting case because you would think the better you tie down your shoe, the better you're going to run with it, but not always. There's a little bit of shifting in the foot as well, so there's a couple of things in the Mach 5 fit-wise that need to be, I guess, monitored in a regular basis. And these aren't things I thought about in the blue and orange pair of Mach 5s I had. This is just something I'm looking at with this yellow, blue, and like storm colored scheme Mach 5. But again, I bought a new pair because I figured if it's not broken, don't fix it. So I bought myself a new pair just to kind of work with it. But my only concern now, 
as I'm going into the winter season is that the snow and the ice is going to start coming back and the Mach 5 might not be perfect for those conditions. In fact, it might be a detriment to be using this shoe. So as you guys can guess, I do have to whip out the Pegasus Shields for that time being. You know, this is the older pair of Pegasus Shields from like 2018, 2019 that I bought on resale brand new. And uh, because I've rarely use them unless it's winter conditions they have good lifespan but you know this video isn't about these this video is in fact about the mach 5s in this particular case i guess the other thing we can compare is when i decided to stop or when i decided to retire the mach 5 versus the mach 4 so you guys may have remembered this from a previous video and if not this is what the mach 4 looked like by the time i decided to retire the shoe and at this point in time I had peroneal tendon stress fractures in my ankle. So, or not peroneal tendon stress fractures, it was peroneal tendonitis, and I had some kind of like uh, fibula stress fracture at this point. So it was the one on the outside there. And it may have been as a result of not enough support in the foot while I was striking, and it could have also been the case of not having a good recovery time after the Chicago Marathon at the time, and just a couple of things kind of rolling in that kind of sense. So. Of course, don't let your shoes run to this point. So being safe with the way this particular shoe kind of ran itself down is essentially where we're looking at it for now. Um, 270 plus miles and like less than 250. Big difference in the way uh, my running stride has changed between a whole year with both mock shoes in this particular family. So my overall assessment of the Mach 5 is that yes, I did in fact buy another pair of uh, Mach 5s because I like the shoe. There's a lot of other shoes in the market that I do want to still try out like, you know, the Cloud Monster from On, uh, the Endorphin Pro, I have the Zoom Fly 5 I believe it is, and there's a couple other ones I want to start buying and testing out, but as a safe choice for daily training and some speed sessions if they're available, I do choose the Mach 5 once more, and because I had such an awesome ride with it before. You know, lightning strikes twice and I have another shoe that does exactly what it's supposed to do as a daily trainer and I'm not going to really turn my back on it. You know, again, the usual problems still remain of one, the lifespan of the shoe really does suck with this EVA foam, but you are trading its lifespan in terms of what's being used on the outsole for a lighter, more fun shoe to run with on a daily basis. So I think that's where I'm going to end this particular review for now. If you have any other questions, you know, just leave them in the comment section below. If you have some shoe suggestions for me to try out and would like to watch those videos, you know, throw them in the comments below as well. And because I'm back in season for marathon training pretty early, I need to play around with some more shoes. So let's do it and uh, let's have some fun with this. So thanks so much again for watching this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.